And you're live early. How early? Like 30 seconds. 30 seconds. <laughs> it counts. What are you doing? Scraping the bench. Yeah? Okay, I don't like that sound, please. No, no, no. Too much. Too much. I'm cleaning up. All right. You this know? is crazy from Benjamin. Baltimore this morning, Chicago this afternoon, Maine this evening. That's a what? lot of driving. I'm assuming driving or flying. I would, you could not drive from Chicago to Maine in <laughs> half a day. What if you're a really fast driver? Probably not gonna survive. Probably not safe. Probably not safe. Like at all. Well, you know, maybe they've got a private like zero job. Zero safe. Oh, there you go. But they're picking up a goldenar, probably like a labradoodle, golden. It says it right there. Yeah, but what is that? Oh, half golden. Half Labrador. Labrador. That's a cute dog. You have to pick a good name for it. Gladiator. Gladiator? Why gladiator? It's like Golador. I guess that works. Gladiator. Okay, I like it. That's what it looks like from my perspective. From your here. perspective, they already from like named it gladiator. Really steep so... angle. It looks like gladiator. Like I'm going to pick up a gladiator. <laughs> <laughs> Those dogs get pretty big, so that's actually like a pretty good. That would work. That would work. Probably a medium ish. All right. All right. So what are we drinking? Leftover wine. From, from your birthday? My birthday dinner. His birthday dinner. What is this one? This was wine? not my birthday. <laughs> Which was yesterday. All right. The day after my birthday dinner. It still counts as birthday dinner. Because what happened is for Matt's birthday, it was his birthday on Wednesday. But for some reason, for weeks, I thought his birthday was on Tuesday. Not that I don't know the date. I thought the 18th was on Tuesday. Yeah. It wasn't. It was not. It was on Wednesday. But... Um, he wouldn't tell me what he wanted for dinner. Like, I was like, what do you want me to make you for your birthday dinner? And he was like, I don't care. Nothing. Whatever. So I made it myself. Well, you never said. So then. <laughs> so yesterday I made it myself. So then yesterday he went and bought steak. He's like, well, I think I'll have steak. And I was like, okay, good. Go get steak. But you make the steak. I don't make the steak. <laughs> so. Yeah, I did it all. Okay. I and did. Then, yeah, okay. Didn't I? I mean, yeah. It was really good, actually. So. It's good because, you yeah, know, it's a good one. Mm -hmm. It was a really good steak. He went to the fancy grocery store, which is Kowalski's, which I can't say right. Kowalski's. 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 It's very, what, Polish? I don't know. I think so. It's got a ski. I think I'm good at names. It's a ski, so yeah. Don't you know I'm terrible with names? Mm -hmm. So how old are you? 34. Yeah. I gotta think about it. <laughs> no, you're now in your mid-30s. Officially mid-30s. Here mm -hmm. we go. You're in it. You're a 30-year-old. I think this is when we start complaining or something. Is that how it works? Complaining about what? Everything. Um, do you, are you trying to say that people who are older complain about everything? Because that's what you just said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, my arm hurts. What? Who are you hanging out with? I can't stand up. <laughs> who are you hanging out with? Everyone, I don't know anyone who is it. <laughs> my knees hurt. I don't know. When does that start? I think like in your 70s is when like your back hurts all the time. Okay, well. But not all 70 year olds are like that. We'll get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Such a That's what I'm going with. Weirdo. All right. So it was your birthday. What'd you get for your birthday? From your parents. Oh, I got a tree from my parents, which is pretty cool. What kind of tree? Crimson maple. Mm -hmm. That's how I breed them now. Yep. So we got that going. Mm -hmm. uh, that's it, I think, right? No. Caitlin made you a really nice brownie that I didn't get to eat any of. You ate some. My sister will attest to that because she was here and watched you eat a brownie. But I our have, children have one did. Piece of brownie. Like then yesterday, they were watching TV while I was working out, and I kept hearing them like in the kitchen. I was like, oh, I'm sure they're just like grabbing a snack. It's fine. It's not a big yeah, deal. They were grabbing a snack. They, right? <laughs> they grabbed the yeah. entire pan and ate the rest. So I had brownies for dinner. Yeah, but they weren't hungry. Why? I don't know. It was so weird. <laughs> That's your kids for you. Yeah. Uh-huh. That is, they like sugar. Just like you. Yeah. Just like me. All right. So from Randy, so your birthday was the 18th? It was. It was. The math works. The math works. Yep. Mm-hmm. All right. What was your most memorable birthday gift ever? Like ever, ever? You probably don't have one. You know how bad my memory is? <laughs> it's probably a gift he bought Do you not understand my memory is that bad? <laughs> it's my jointer. Yeah, I bought you that. No, you bought yourself that. Yep. Matt is the first person <laughs> I ever met who buys himself presents 
like not like obviously like people buy themselves things but like matt buys himself like a christmas present like this is my christmas present to myself yeah that was my birthday present when i turned 24. yeah so i think hey randy also yes. his mom turned 89 on the 18th wow happy birthday wow. yeah happy birthday indeed <laughs> that's great wow mm -hmm. yeah how about for your birthday? birthday? You got baby, little babies? I mean, you didn't. None of them were born around your birthday, but. Jared was. I guess. Yeah, 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 I suppose. The month later. I got him. <laughs> Whatever birthday that was, 28 or something, 29. 20. He was tw I was 29 when he was born, so you were 28. No, you're 27. Really? I was that young? Yeah, you were 27 when Jared was born. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Woof. <laughs> That's not right. Yeah, it was, because then you had a birthday right there after. What year was he born? 15. No one wants to watch you. 28. Wait, I would have been 27. Just told you. 28. I told you. Never mind. See? Dang mm -hmm. it. Who would have thought? I beat you at math. Also, hey, well, it was Andy's was. birthday. He turned 60 on the 18th. Happy birthday, Andy. Apparently, this is like a good day for birthdays. It is. It is. It's the day to be born, I guess. If you're going to have a summer birthday, do it then. Happy 60th. Oh, yeah. My mom, you got Lynn Dairy cheese. My mother bought oh, yeah. you a present. <laughs> my mother-in-law got me cheese. Yeah, she got how many pounds? Like five. Probably it's pretty close. Like yeah. it's it's a pretty. It's like one of those gift bags. Like this big gift bag. And then like the handle broke off because it's so heavy. So <laughs> there's that. Yeah. <laughs> she has some cheese. Some cheese. She has mm -hmm. some of that. Yeah, I put it in the fridge. It's For awesome. snacks after this. For snacks. It's Friday snacks. <laughs> Uh, All right, I like this question from. Where go? <laughs> I hate this question. I love this question from David. I enjoy asking this question to strangers. What truly <laughs> makes you happy? Being outdoors is my happiness. So his is being outdoors. What would be your happiness? Napping. Napping truly makes you happy. I would say that when we first met, I would believe that. Yeah. He is the first. I keep saying you're the first person of everything. <laughs> I invented napping. <laughs> Matt invented napping, guys. It was my thing. No one had ever thought to just like go to sleep in the middle of the day before. And then Matt started doing it and it was it, a revelation. It, it caught on real fast. <laughs> it's like jogging. It's like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. napping. Okay, so that's what truly makes you happy. You know, I believe it. If you say it, I, I don't think that's not the right answer. I just want to make sure that it is your answer. But you gotta, but you gotta be in the mood for it though. Yeah, okay. So napping is what truly makes you happy. I don't know, I like wandering around. That's kind of fun too. Yeah. I do that mm -hmm. often on the, on the daily now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. All right. That's what truly makes you happy, napping and wandering around. Yeah, and like probably like any part of my business where I'm not on my computer. Yeah, I'd say like... That's probably like... You like movement. Yeah. Which is the opposite of napping. So it's like you are like two extremes. I like to move and then take a nap. <laughs> to take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's where it's at right there. Right? I like that. Oh, okay. Get from move or napping. From Dan. I saw you follow Door County Creamery on Instagram. We were there very recently. <laughs> what things do you all like to do in Door County? So uh, I live with the people that own that place. Yeah, I did. I lived with the <laughs> people who own that place. That's how I follow them. <laughs> I used to live in Door County over the summer, so I have like very strong feelings about Door County as in like, I love it. And there are tons of things I love to do in Door County, it's but- It's a strongly small world. Yeah, that's why I like Door County because it is a small world. So like you knew a lot of the business owners. I worked, I lived in Sister Bay. I worked at JJ's La Puerta and that's a Mexican restaurant. Um, and I also worked at um, the waterfront a little bit. It's owned by the same people. And there are tons of really good things to do there, but I don't know. We haven't been there in like 10 years. More than that. <laughs> probably more than that now. Yeah, so probably 12. We, yeah. So I don't know if Since all the stuff. Since you stopped living there? Well, I went one year after I lived there. I lived there for three summers in a row. Like when I went to college, that's how I made enough money to pay for my portion of college. You said I would go and waitress and save all my tips and then put that towards my like, you know, life stuff. Yeah, and my drum sander. And yeah, I bought Matt's drum sander with my, my tips. Yeah, that's right. She made pretty good tips. I did. Um, but she looked good. <laughs> <laughs> but there, um, we really liked going to Fred and Fuzzies on Tuesdays way back when. They used to have live concerts, and it's hard to find Fred and Fuzzies if you aren't from the area. So it wasn't packed with like 
people who were there vacationing. It was like locals yeah, on the beach. You never took me there. I took you there once. Nope. Okay. I never took. Well, he wasn't a local, so obviously. I went to Good Eggs. Good Eggs is good. Yeah, Ephraim. Yeah, and Ephraim. And I like Pebble Beach. All that fun stuff. Maybe you answer the actual question. What are all the things you like to do in Narcani? Those are my recent. I like to go to Good Eggs, <laughs> to Pebble Beach. You said all the things you did. You say what, what things I like to do. I like to do those things. Yeah. Well, we would go to Washington Island. Well, that bike ride thing. That's Washington Island. We'd go to Washington Island and then bike all day. We'd bring our bikes up and stuff. It was super fun. That was a long time ago. I that probably could do that now. You could. I don't. It was pretty. It was hilly, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely would not be able You'd to do fine. that okay. anymore. <laughs> You'd be fine. It would take me multiple days. <laughs> camp halfway or something that's ridiculous <laughs> <laughs> i'm out there walking my bike oh can't do it anymore can't do it oh my gosh the burn is too great mm -hmm. oh i love yeah fish creek market in bailey's harbor one of the top drinks i've had the cherry bounce i don't do the fish boils though that's more of a um people turn so <laughs> it's still fun but it's not like two tears like I would say, as someone who only lived there during the summer, so I'm not like a true local, but if someone tells me they went to Door County and I say, where'd you go? And they say Sturgeon Bay, then I go, you didn't go to Door County. Because <laughs> there's like a tier of people, like once you get past Sturgeon Bay, that's where I would say real Door County is because it has all the small shops. Like there are no, you can't go to McDonald's. You're not going to find a Target anywhere above Sturgeon Bay. That could be different now. It could, I For hope, all you know. I don't think it is because I'm friends with people who still live there. And what, so. are very vocal if they would see a target nearby? Right, oh, cancel. I was almost trying to block comments by accident. You are? I was like trying to move up and down. I was like, are you sure you want to block comments from these people? And then I was like, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't want to do that. These are the people you want to block. Yeah. It's the people that come afterwards. Yeah. All right, so let's get to, because people are like, I don't care about Door County. I'm here about Wood. I don't <laughs> That might not be true. That might. I think that it is true. People do. I and I didn't. I didn't hard it. So. What a hack. I know. I know. It's like you haven't been doing this for like a year, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it's some change. All right, from Gary, who I accidentally almost blocked. I'm sorry, Gary. You can't block Gary. It was an accident. That's why the Gary's internet, the best. Internet was like, are you sure? How you could want, you? Are you sure you want to block him? And I said, no. No. I don't. Yeah. I wanted to scroll. Okay. How big do you plan on making your new shop when you build it? I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't actually like looked at like how big that area is mm -hmm. to get an idea of like what size foundation makes sense for that mm -hmm. area. So somewhere between a foundation size of probably two or three thousand square feet. So for a total size of five to six thousand, mm -hmm. it's two levels. I don't know. I gotta go up there and like with like a the laser thing. What laser thing? The measuring. Oh, your measuring. Okay, laser yeah. measurer thing. Mm -hmm. Just to get an idea of like, okay, what's 80 feet look like out here? I don't know. It's just an open area. I don't know what 80 feet is. I don't know yeah. what 60 feet is or 40 feet. I don't know. And like what orientation? It's going to be a rectangle. I don't know mm -hmm. if I'm going to do <laughs> long ways, long ways into the hill or short ways into the hill. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know how long that hill is either. That's the other thing. Like, I don't know. I know the elevation gain is 10 feet, but I don't know over what distance that is. Okay. So I got some measuring to do for that, but that's like, I'll be excited if I start that in four years. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what else? It's all going to be timber framed, right? Uh, no? The upstairs will be, yeah. The foundation, the first level will be concrete. Okay. Because it's in the hill. Hmm. And so I'm thinking like a concrete, First level, probably with like a spancrete uh, ceiling or be the floor of the actual second level. And the second level on top of this concrete structure will be timber frame. Mm -hmm. Don't know if that's feasible. Don't know anything. Mm -hmm. Just some ideas kicking around in my head. I don't, I feel like, what about all, all these details of your shop? I don't know. <laughs> right now I still am like in a glamorized sense of like, I'll have this space, it'll be nice, it'll be a sweet view back here. Yeah, it's gonna be amazing. I'm gonna have a porch. I'll have room like the, for the, the semi trucks to park. No, there's no semi trucks in my backyard. That's where I put it back there. So the semi trucks are the logs. 
Oh, I thought you meant like it's going to sit there. I'm going to have a whole fleet of semis. I was like, why are you owning semi here, trucks? I do nothing <laughs> just yeah. to look at, mm -hmm. to make it look like I have something going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah, so from David, so you're going to build it into a hill. Correct. Correct. So it's like there's going to be two, it's going to be like a little like, like our old house where it was a basement walkout. Yeah, so both levels are walkout. Wood shop will be up top, mm -hmm. and then the bottom will be like flex space, I mm -hmm. guess, for like other things, it's like warehousing and maybe like machine shop or place to store equipment. Mm -hmm. like, things that aren't woodworking will be downstairs. Are you going to do in-floor heating? Of, Tyler, of course. <laughs> so I we mean, have, come on. <laughs> he has it now. So from Tyler, if your budget allows, in-floor radiant heat is amazing for our northern winters. This, Should... this budget is going to be out of the freaking world. So yeah, it will allow for it. Don't worry. Really? This budget? Where's this budget coming from? <laughs> that's why it's going to take that long to get to that Because you're going to have some crazy uh, budget fairy that's going to come. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I will be. <laughs> can't wait. Is right. Oh. This is gonna be like a shot for like the next, for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. and then whatever happens after I'm gone. Right. So okay. I'm not really. We're just gonna go all, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all in. Our children won't need clothes or shoes because they're gonna have like the best shop ever. <laughs> Why will they yeah, need that? that shop generates the money for their clothes and shoes. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> And it'll give them a place to work someday if they want it. Yeah, you're like, I'm, this is long-term, guys. You don't need that. I'm building you a job. Yeah, I'm building you a future. You're welcome. You're You'll welcome. thank me later. That's what, that's the, like the principal like parent phrase. You'll thank me. You'll later. thank me later. And you're like, I'm gonna enjoy it in the meantime, though, guys. <laughs> you know, I'm enjoying it right now, but you thank me later. I'm enjoying your future. <laughs> enjoying your future. <laughs> oh, you slave boy. That's me. That sounds like you. Mm -hmm. Um, this is fun. <laughs> from Sam, this might be his shirt. Where did you get that shirt? Is this his? No, it's from Not in Green. Oh, I can't it? even see it. There you go. Oh, it's tiny. Not in Green. Mm -hmm. They got like a bunch of like silly shirts mm -hmm. like this. Similarly ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But this is the best one. Obviously. Okay. By far. Any more shop questions? Yeah, there's a lot. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, I'm saving them. All right. Here. So, from it's Cody. All a, it's still all a dream. It's all a dream. From Cody, what is a good thickness Maybe it's a hallucination, milk? I don't know. Probably a little bit of both. It's a fever dream. <laughs> all right. From Cody, what is a good thickness to mill for a tabletop? Depends what style of table you're planning on making. All right. Give us some examples. You're making like a traditional, like, apron style table, you know, like five quarter mm -hmm. is a good size because you're going to end up probably like uh, seven eighths for your thickness for your top or three quarter for the top, something like that. If you're doing like a slab top, it's more mm -hmm. of like a visual impact that you're going for. So usually like you want to finish thickness around two inches, maybe an inch and three quarter or something like that. Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to make sure that after you're done flattening like your giant slab that you have that. So you'll end up milling a bit thicker. Mm -hmm. really, it's like a, it's a learning experience to like understand like how much your stuff that you produce moves as it dries. So if you uh, are a little bit loosey goosey about how you stack things and like how well you dry it, then it's probably going to move a lot more than someone's going to take your time. How about elm wood? Elm likes to move. Likes to move. So it wiggles. Gonna, it dances. It does wiggles. So you probably want to go a little bit thicker on that just from the natural implications of the wood itself. Mm -hmm. And then do everything in your power to dry it well and correctly. Okay. So sticker it nicely, allow it to dry it gradually, and put a god off amount of weight on top of it mm -hmm. to hold it flat. Okay. Oh, okay. I like this. From Andy, your property looked dry this week in the videos. Is Minnesota in a drought area? Here in upstate New York, we have had never ending rain. Yes. We are not having that. We had uh, eight weeks without rain. Um, it's not I great. forget if when I shot that video, if we had if it had rained yet. I don't think it had. Probably hadn't. But we had. I think we finally had two inches of rain last week, maybe. Finally, no eight weeks without anything. Mm -hmm. It's like the driest I've ever seen anything around here. Yeah, it's un it's weird. Especially this time of year. You normally get like summer rain, thunderstorms, like washout. Yeah. Rain. But yeah, we didn't get anything. 
this year? I mean, in my head, I've never had, I've never thought about like when's the last time it rained, like my entire life of living, because it always just rains enough that you don't have to worry about when's the last time it rained. Yeah. And then this summer it's been like, when is the last time it's rained? Because it's been shockingly a very long time. And you start noticing like people who don't water their lawns, you wouldn't really necessarily see the difference between people who did or didn't. But this year, yes. Yeah. It's wild. It's like done. Yeah. Then Matt started going crazy and watering our lawn because <laughs> he didn't want it to like die forever. Yeah. Well, the problem is like once it's, once it's gone, it's gone. Mm -hmm. Like it takes a lot for it to come back. But if you get a little bit of water on there, so it doesn't completely die off. Mm -hmm. So when it finally rains, it'll come back and be okay. Right. It comes back to green. So ours is back to green now. Yeah. Versus being still dead. Yeah, it looks a lot but better. Wet. It's not as great as it has been, but it is. I mean, it's like when different. I built the farmhouse table, it rained like every single night. Yeah, because you had to keep like, yeah, you were yeah, really. Yeah, I did it outside. Yeah, you were super annoyed about that. Yeah, it was always raining. Yeah. So. And that was five years ago. Mm -hmm. Six years, five, five years ago, five years ago. Yeah. All right, speaking of trees, how from Chad, how old does a tree have to be to get good wood, not taking yield into consideration? Uh, I have a video. It's mm. called something like, is sawing small logs worth it or something along those lines? Mm -hmm. Talk about exactly that. What you can expect to get out of a small log. Okay. It's really about how much, uh, Realistic expectations of like how much material I should get. Like, you want a board that wide? Okay. Then maybe it's worth it. Then you can get it out of a tree that's, you know, that big. Okay. So, that's really kind of what your project is and how much wood you're trying to get. Yeah. And that's your answer. What's your time worth? What's your time? Yeah. <laughs> I, like I think that. that was the, like the overarching theme of that video. Okay. All right. Um, so, speaking of that, for Michael, what would be an average price per like pound or board foot? I know it all depends on the species. Just looking for an idea of what you would pay for a log if you're going to pay for it. A log? Oh, okay, well do the differences. Like an actual log? No, let's just say first just board feet. You, you, you do it by board feet. For Unless, logs though? Well, I don't know. Tell me the difference between the two. A log is a log. A slab is something that's been cut already and probably dried. Okay, so how much for a slab that's been dried? I, I price them based off the size of them. Okay, and what is that price? Uh, most of them have been like between eight to ten dollars a board foot for like your three foot wide stuff. Okay. It's kind of where that ends up. Mm -hmm. But he's talking about like buying logs. But if you buy a log, then what is it? Uh, like thirty cents. A log. <laughs> per board foot. <laughs> okay. Maybe twenty five cents, fifty cents. Depends on usually depends on the species and the log you already go to. Mm -hmm. What you're doing when you buy logs, if you're buying it from like an actual, like, I don't know, like a, like a log yard, like that's where like loggers sell all their logs to, and the mm -hmm. log yard organizes it, the species and like size and everything. Basically, you're paying for like the retail experience. If I want to buy that log over there, and I'll buy that log over there, I want that one, and then you put it on my trailer and we're good to go. That's like one way. Mm -hmm. Most of the stuff that I do, I don't pay for because that's not the experience. It's like, Okay, it's way in the back yard. Good Figure luck going out. to get it. I don't have any way to load it here for you, so good luck getting on your trailer. Hopefully don't, don't destroy get, my yard. Don't get stuck on the way out, and have a nice day. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You're like each doing each other a favor. In that right, because at that point, like, if they were to charge log yard prices, mm -hmm. if that was a thing, it's still not worth enough for me to go back and get it and pay for it, because the, the recovery is worth more than what they would sell it for. Right. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Okay. There you go. So, is a wood chipper on the equipment list for the property? Mm hmm. It is? Yeah, we talked about this a little bit. We did? You and me? Yeah. I feel like I would have talked about Fargo if we had talked about it. Well, I, we had men I had mentioned how I want to set up, like, eventually have a setup for, like, um, uh, tree services to do drops. Mm hmm. So, that would be like, I would just take everything from their truck. Oh, so that you would thank check. Thank you for the logs. Also, wow. feel free to leave all your brush as a thank you, so you don't have to go pay to dump it or go somewhere else to dump it. Okay. And then I would just chip all the brush. That would be what? One of our baby's jobs to do? Feed the chipper. <laughs> Feed the chipper, <laughs> but not your hand? I'd be a big chipper. The whole body. <laughs> yeah, so not your body even more. No, you can't have it. Now I have like, I'm freaking out even just thinking about it. No. You would I, feed it with the excavator. I've seen Fargo. So you, would, you wouldn't be near it. 
I know how it works. You'd be in the in the cab with the grapple, just dropping stuff into the. Okay, so it's like a game, where it's like. It would be like a game, yeah, because mm -hmm. it'd be big. Yeah. Yeah. So, what's the price for walnut? For what? For like a board feet by board feet. What do you do walnut at? Depends how big it is. I. Doesn't matter. Tell me range. Same price as everything else, because it all costs me the same. Okay, so what is it? Depends how big it is. Okay. Eight to ten dollars board foot is typically what it ends up being. There you go. That's your answer. For like your 30 inch, 36 inch wide stuff. Mm -hmm. Somewhere around mm -hmm. there. Ten, 10 quarter. Slab stuff. So do you ever cut dimensional lumber or just long slabs? I have a video. <laughs> just like that, I've had a video <laughs> segment. I have a series of videos called Turning a Log into Lumber. Mm -hmm. Video one, we talk about turning a log into edged lumber. Video mm -hmm. two, we talk about turning a log into slabs. And video three, we talk about all the less glamorous sides of the sawmill thing, mm -hmm. which is cleaning up all the crap and stacking all the lumber and then drying all the lumber mm -hmm. in our basement. Yeah, our old basement. So normally I'd, I cut small logs into dimensional. Okay. Big stuff in the slabs. And I prefer big stuff because it's more fun. I'll answer this one for Terry. What do you do with all the slabs you cut? Do you sell them to different people? Yes. The same person. The same person. <laughs> you could. All to you. Well, to you, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> we, no. have, we have an ongoing arrangement with Terry. We just, <laughs> here you go. And he sends us some money back. <laughs> that would be a nice arrangement for mostly you. Probably Terry if you want a lot of wood. <laughs> just shows up. And the money comes this way. Yeah. It's perfect. That would be really nice. Yeah, Matt does sell all of it. You just, if you see something you like on a video, you just send him a message and go, I like this one. It was really cool. It was really cool. Give it was the best. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, where is it? It's hot here. It is getting warm in here. Even I think it's warm, which tells you a lot. Yeah, I'm sweating. <laughs> all right. So what do you do with your used up saw blades from Christine? Nothing. They're at my warehouse in a giant pile. What do normal? What do other people do with them? Like typically, what do people do? Recycle them. Okay. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. That sounds like work. Yeah. You gotta like cut them up, or put them like in a drum or something. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's a, I, it's a project for another day. Okay, so that's what you do is you, just punt. I punt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, have a, I have it on a pallet now. There's just mm -hmm. there's a pallet full of saw blades. It's up on the pallet rack. Out of sight, sort mm -hmm. of out of sight, mostly out of mind. <laughs> so I don't know what this means. You, you need, maybe you won't either. Matt, did you see the comments on the road the internet built? Nope. No? The internet built. On the internet built. Oh. The answer's no, I guess. I don't know what that means. So the answer's no. All right, back to logs <laughs> from Jacob. Cool. Cheers, Cremonas. Any hot tips for finding free logs to mill? I have a video. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Urban Logging Strategies. Lots of hot tips in there. A lot of hot tips. It's basically all steamy, very it's all, steamy. All the tips. <laughs> Super hot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're in a weirdo mood for sure. I have video. I have seven years worth of videos. This is good though, because now Jacob can go and like Google it, and it'll pop up, and he can watch it. It's and get a lot more information. 2017, I think. Is it still relevant? Is it tips like, get your phone book out? <laughs> it's not like get your phone book out. It's like find, if, there, if you want to go big scale, looking for log yards, find that timber clearing company. Yeah. Go talk to them. Mm -hmm. Talk to your local tree services if you have the ability to take whatever they have, whenever they have it for you. So mm -hmm. at the drop of a hat, so you're not, you know, inconveniencing them. Yeah. Uh, out of people's yards, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. Mm -hmm. And then there's some search terms in there mm -hmm. that I use. And uh, oh yeah, if you happen to have a woodlot, another option. There you go. Not everybody has a whole forest <laughs> to, you know, log themselves. Mm -hmm. But maybe your friend does. But maybe your friend does. All right. I don't. From Benjamin, how close is construction on the house? I have roofers coming in in a week. Oh, good luck. All right. We're about a month out. And what Ish. Do, okay. How Ish. happy or annoyed do you think the whole process will be? It would be, be plenty of drama to make the videos good. 
I don't think it'll be manufactured drama by any extent. It won't be. That's the best part. Real life drama. It'll be... I'll have to watch it. It'll probably come off me looking really crabby. Because I don't know when you're going to be in it, but... If I walk by and I'm videoing and I go, blah, blah, blah. Well, I guess I might not be in it at all. But if you want a drama of me being crabby about the process, I'm sure you get lost. This is not what it looked like on the paper. Or I'll be like, what are you guys doing? Why is there a hole? Or I'm on Why a conference call. Why is there a hole? Call. Yeah, obviously there's a hole. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We're digging a foundation. We... <laughs> I gotta figure out where to put some dirt. Not by my house. I was thinking maybe we'll put it like in the bedroom, you know, have like a dirt box. <laughs> You're so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm excited. Are you? Are we excavating? I'm very nervous. It's been like 10 years since I ran an excavator. Mm hmm. It's that one time. In our backyard of our old house. Yeah. You rented it. I remember that. That was fun. Mm hmm. I don't know, I'm just worried because, I don't know. I think Matt's too, like, laissez-faire about stuff. And then he doesn't like explaining things. Which is weird because this is his job, is to explain things. Just to you. Yeah, just to me. No one else. Like, too many husbands and wives. They only get crabby at their significant other. But if a third party asks them the question, they'd be very polite and nice about it. Yeah. That's mostly because, like... We have like a repertoire. What does that mean? <laughs> I'm always nice to you. I make you lots of food. That's that's it? That's the bar right there? That's a nice bar. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It is. It is quite nice. I'm just a little more work because I got a lot of things I got to finish I'm... before my life becomes that. I'm worried because I know you and you get very crabby when you have actual deadlines. I don't know how you could do a normal job, to be honest. I will work more. No, because Matt has like, I think most... I would delegate it. I feel like a lot of people who have stuff like you, I just have to believe they're more structured than you are. What are you talking about? Like Stuff like me. What does that people mean? who make videos, so like, of course they are. Are you kidding that's me? That's what I'm saying. Like, have I you like seen me? Matt has no. Stru- so I'll be. I like, gotta get in the mood for these things. So I'll be like, hey Matt, you know, what is your goal for this week? No, the answer is I zero goals. goals. This yeah. never happened. No, like he isn't like okay in the month of what? Okay, we're coming into September. He's not like month of September. I want to have like X amount of videos out. So on Monday I'll do this. Next Monday, none of that. I do my TikToks. All he does is like I have to do my TikToks, which. Makes him really crabby or happy, depending on his mood. It's like the whole day, some days. Some days. Like today is like three hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then like probably 10 people will look at it. <laughs> so. I think it's got, it's got like 100 views. Oh, that's pretty good. That's good. Or I'm something. just saying for the amount of effort you put into it, I feel like it doesn't come back yet. It's a lot of much. Oh yeah. So, but, but, so the contractors gave you two prices. It's got 600 views already. What are you talking about? I don't know. I didn't even watch it. Yeah, so I'm not one of those 600. Good. I'm expecting another one. Yeah, you'll get another one. one. 601. That's right. Oh, it's Sometime coming. tonight. It's mm-hmm. coming. Yeah, so did your contractors give you two prices? One for them just working and the second one higher if Matt helps? They gave us the high number and then we'll see where things go. I don't like any of the numbers. So The number is here's what it might probably cost and then maybe it'll come down depending on how much actual work Matt can do. Yeah, hopefully a lot of it. Well, it's like, it'll be good for videos and stuff, so. Matt, is this your only job? I'm also a father and a husband. (laughs) (laughs) But that's it. That's it. Besides being a I have enough jobs for like four people. Uh Uh-huh. Do you? I feel like it. (laughs) I feel like it. Yeah, so Matt's job is just video creation. Sure. Short, in short term. Like words. That's the foundational, central thing of the business. Mm-hmm. Content. Yeah. Making videos. Making videos. And then there's a lot of ancillary things. Yes. They go along with that. Mm-hmm. All right. When you are sawing live edge slabs, how do you decide on the thickness? I would think wider would need to be thicker, but what is the rule of thumb? There is no rule of thumb, but you are correct. Mm-hmm. And that goes back to our earlier discussion on like, after a while, you figure out how flat your stuff ends up drawing based off your drawing practices. Mm-hmm. Um, so I usually start like up to like maybe 30 to 36. It's going to be 10 quarter. Mm-hmm. I go over, over that 11. Mm-hmm. You start getting to like over four feet, five feet wide, you're going to be at 12, mm-hmm. something like that. 
Yeah. That's that's it. And that's all to get your finished thickness around two inches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you go longer stuff, you want to go thicker as well because you have more mm -hmm. area that could bolt or twist or something. There you go. Um, Matthew, what is the prettiest wood for a tabletop? Obviously, that's an opinion. So what is yours? Crotch. Oh my god. <laughs> I just feel like that was a layup for you to say that. Pretty sure it totally set me up for that one. <laughs> so from... Anything with a lot of crotch. All right, great. Big old crotch. Okay. You're just trying to be like now pornographic. No, just wooden terms. All okay. right. You know, throw some butt joints in there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> This is like how like woodworking is made for you because Matt does have like a, I don't know, a 12 year old boy childish sense of humor. humor. Yes. yes, very yes. much so. Mm -hmm. That's how we get along. So it's like perfect because it's like, yeah, this is woodworking terms were made for you. Uh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so from from Brian, did the gentleman in Baldsville, New York, get that giant log cut? That guy that you put up the thing on? Yeah, he's moving it. So, uh, yes, he hasn't got a cut yet. But he is extracting it from the yard, which, yeah, I can't wait to see that. Cause he is, does he have a YouTube channel as well? No. No. Instagram. Mm. Uh, but it's going to be a big crane mm. to get that thing out of there. Nice. I'm sure it weighs like 30,000 pounds. Wow. Woof. <laughs> it's big. <laughs> All right. Question for me. Okay. Lindsay, how many hours do you work? So I work like a normal job in the fact that I work, I go downstairs, I still work remote around eight o'clock and I try to work till six. Um, depending on the day, sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more. But, you know, typically I try to say like eight to six are my working hours. However, in October, I'll have a trial. Um, so it'll be longer hours because just trial preparation and whatnot always creates a little bit more work, but yeah, that's about it. Otherwise, Matt, well, I bother you. Well, yeah, he's he's pretty good actually. It's it's easier to get work done at home now because like I don't know, you can like pop down really fast. Like if I get an email, well, right now I wouldn't because I had some drinks of wine. But if tomorrow someone like sent me an email or whatever, it'd be very easy to like pop down, do something, and have everything I need like at my fingertips versus in the office it's a little bit harder to do but now yeah but now you're all close yeah actually but now i am close i used to work about 40 minutes away and now it's 15. it's really nice yeah mm -hmm. and you haven't even gone in i haven't not even <laughs> one day it's kind of weird <laughs> um, all right matt hello from houston if hello. you build a cnc could you please build a robot arm like the ones lingram has what's that um be like a actual whatever six axes. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would build one of those. That sounds like a lot of work. Would you ever build a CNC? I don't, I don't know. Maybe. Probably not. Okay. People do that, I suppose. But are probably like into that. And I don't know. I'm kind of at the point in my life where I'm like just buy it and be done with it. I can right away, and not spend how much time making the thing. So the man who made a sawmill. They didn't really, they didn't, and they don't make them like that still, but they didn't make them like that back then. Right. Yeah. Okay. So this is a really good reminder to us from Mark. Is it hard to find insurance for your house where you run a business from it? We got to follow up with our insurance people to make sure that they include it. I would say no. No? I don't know. They covered it at the old house. Yeah. They need to fix Just it. Just fine. But now that I have my commercial carrier too, I don't really know what the overlap necessarily is. That's why we were going to have a meeting to figure it out. So I got, that's also on the to-do list. Mm -hmm. Since we've had the commercial policy, for, I don't know what. Well, yeah, because that's like relative to like his warehouse because of stuff in the oh, it's warehouse. Also, yeah, it's also my liability too. Yeah. So. It's like, like that commercial policy is like four different things. Mm -hmm. Or it's like the, pro the product's liability policy my general liability policy, the policy to ensure the warehouse and all its contents, mm -hmm. and one more thing, something else. Sorry to I everyone who are insurance agents, but insurance just... That was the worst experience. It's hard. Yeah. It's getting commercial insurance to get that lease. Mm -hmm. 
It was like, just kidding, we don't actually want to underwrite this policy. Just yeah. kidding, we spent, you spent all this time doing paperwork, just kidding, it's not going to go through underwriting. Just yeah. kidding. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's like, just come on, guys. Yeah. Do something for me here. Right. I don't yeah. want to fill out your, all your paperwork for nothing. <laughs> yeah. Why can't you fill out some of this for me? <laughs> Why is any of this relevant? Yeah, no, it was... It's also very difficult because I have a very weird business that they don't really understand. Yeah, it's people I have seen time. before. Yeah. So that was also terrible. Mm -hmm. That was last July, yeah. 2020. The worst experience of my life. Okay. If that's the worst experience of your life, you're very blessed. But <laughs> Jody's been really good for us. Mm -hmm. She's really helpful. She actually walked me through a lot of paperwork last year. Mm -hmm. And she raises llamas. Oh, I like that. So there's that. Oh, this from Andy. Insurance sucks, says the guy that did errors and omission litigation oversight. Yeah, litigation, insurance litigation, woof. <laughs> it's own thing. I, um, our office does not represent insurance companies, but I have handled it on the other end. It's exhausting. <laughs> it's the only <laughs> way to put it. <laughs> insurance. Uh, and then I don't even want to get into health insurance because that'll make me extremely crappy. Well, you live here, so. In America, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right, what else do you want to tell us? You answered every question. You what? You I was yet. very diligent to make sure. It's a question, tell me, but I don't think I did. I think the Kickstarter for the book is almost done. Mm -hmm. I think we got like, what, weeks for that? That should still be in the description. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave's book. Um, what else is going on? Mm -hmm. I'm almost out of chair kits. Yeah, that's right. Keep you said that in mind. Yeah. So I, think, I think I have, I don't have any more cherries. I think I have like four more walnut ones. Mm -hmm. And then like the only other ones I have left are like maple fours and threes and fives. And that's it. Okay. That's going to be it till probably like January. Because you already ordered new stuff and it's just been sitting in limbo right like they can't fulfill everything the orders. is super behind right now right so yeah <laughs> <laughs> what book to anyone who has a book yeah because you didn't really wood from the city wood from the city uh you wrote the forward when did we talk about that like two weeks ago two weeks ago. matt two weeks did ago? not write the forward but the book it's on the list says he list. wrote the forward so he will be i will write it uh i think i left the link in the description but it's okay. uh being self-published uh, so there's no like publisher oversight of what any does that, that mean? stuff. Like, well, publishers want to sell books, okay. so they want to strike a broader audience than the people oh. that really want to like know about forestry in an that's urban environment. That's what you're saying. Okay. So Dave decides to self-publish the book, so that's why the Kickstarter to fund taking the manuscript, right, and turning it into turning paper. it into a book with pictures mm -hmm. and layouts and right. whatever the else that goes along with book stuff mm -hmm. i don't know there's a lot it sounds terrible there's a lot all right from jacob do you have any upcoming trips planned uh what is it right now is it where are we at september we're in august almost september yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh i forgot the card thing what card the um the tool swap thing here in uh, oh, it's in, upstairs. Uh, where is it? You No. Mm -hmm. Bloomington? Oh, I saw the Bloomington Armory. Yeah. The um, Minnesota Woodworkers Guild is hosting the Tool Swapping Expo mm -hmm. September 18th. I think it's a Saturday. Mm -hmm. I don't know the times, but I'm mm -hmm. sure it's on their website. MNWWG.org. <laughs> you can put it in the link below. I will put it in the link thing. Uh, I went to it two years ago. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I had it. They didn't have it last year. Mm -hmm. um, but there are, I think, five or six presenters, and then there is like a marketplace thing, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll be going to that. Uh, and then I think the week after that is Armfest, which okay. I kind of want to go to. So I've, been, I've been wanting to go for like five years, and I still haven't gone. It's in like Crystal Springs, Illinois, or some, something like that. Like driving distance. It's, it's like north, northwest Chicago. Uh, it's a event for people that sit in uh, vintage machinery or like old heavy heavy iron iron mm -hmm. like iron iron iron, mm -hmm. iron fest iron fest a-r-n fest uh-huh a festival uh, so I, 
But I hopefully I can make it to that. You know, just do it. You just do it. It's a it's a Friday and Saturday, I think. Mm-hmm. Okay. Something like that. But vintage machinery. Like if you're into like things that are like the Bridgeport and bigger, that'd be like a cool place to go. Okay. Meet all the people that are like really into that. Like if you like Keith Rucker's channel. If you're into his stuff, go here. That's like the event for you. If you're like, I wish Keith would just post videos constantly. <laughs> you just go there and you meet him. You and tell then you him. Just feel post like you're there. Constantly. And you're like, I need you to do more of this. I know it's a lot of work. I know you're already doing a lot, but just do more. Because mm-hmm. you love it when people say that to you. So you should say that to him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the best thing to say to anybody that does this. Yeah. You like know what, what though? Doing, he, probably, do more. he probably plans his out a little bit more. So he goes, well, I looked on my calendar and I already have uh, filled up. Yeah, it's like I got this 56-part series on restoring this shaper. Right. right. He can be like, but I can fit you in on October 3rd. I'll do your video there. <laughs> Versus Matt's like, I don't, I don't know. know. I don't like, know, man. Someday I'll do a video on it. <laughs> I guess so. Well, that was the, the video I just did was like, oh, someday I'll do this video on going back here and like trimming these trees and pulling these posts out. Mm-hmm. And I finally did it. <laughs> I go. Yeah, I mean, you keep it all in your head. That's the difference. All in your head. It's up there. All right, I have to go. I did hard a bunch of. There's more now. Yeah. I said I answered them all. I know, and then people put them in. So you do. You do call for action. I don't know what that means, but. <laughs> There's no quorum here. Uh huh. Anyway, what you can do. Holy crap! How many questions? No, no, no. So oh. Make sure you go back and forth because when you talk, then people can comment and you can go back. Right. So here you go. Here's another one. Oh my god! Put it in. I'm gonna be here for an hour. Well, I doubt that, but. Speed round. You can do a speed round. I'm, so, right, I'm well, sweaty. Yeah, I, it's really hot in here. I don't know what to tell you, except for that it's summer, and that's what happens in the summer in Minnesota because mm-hmm. it gets hot. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was nice, Mark. Love your videos. Cheers. I like it. All right. Well, Cheers. Good. How many questions? That's a lot of questions, dude. Some of them are fast. Holy crap. You guys start talking, boo. I'm, look, I'm reading the question. Yeah, read them out loud. Have you seen machinery prices lately? Even oh. Grizzly has gone way up just in the last year. I, I haven't really paid a whole lot of attention because I'm not really like necessarily planning to buy any new machinery. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> but that sounds fantastic for everybody that's still trying to find machinery and stuff. I've been thinking about maybe getting a bigger jointer and a bigger bandsaw. But I'm not in a rush for that. That's for sure. Ah, blah, 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 blah. That was my blade supplier, Sharpen Blades. So I've gone through a few different suppliers. Uh, the first one I used was Cooks. They sharpen blades. Um, Bandsaw Blades Direct. I don't know if they sharpen blades or not. And then now the carbide blades are from Woodmiser and they also do uh, sharpening. I've never used any of those services though. Uh, I'm assuming this is referring to the, the new shop. Are you gonna put big windows in for natural light or keep the garage door look? Or maybe it is here. I'm keeping this like this because this is gonna turn back into a garage. Uh, in the big shop, I will probably put windows in but put shutters on all the windows so that i can block all the light for filming that's like the only downside to filming is you don't want any like external lights so you can control it but you know long term or when i'm not filming it'd be nice to have the windows to be able to see you know all the all the view and everything that's out there is What is my basic degree and how did you get all the knowledge in woodworking? Uh, I have a, it's a bachelor's of science degree in business with a major in finance and a, ma- and a minor in information systems. And I got all my woodworking knowledge from the reading books and, and uh, reading magazines and then getting in the sh- actually applying all those things to uh, building actual projects. Because you can read all you want, but until you get in the shop and actually like put your hands on things and learn how to actually do the things that are being shown to you in those books and magazines and I guess in videos now, uh, it's, it's totally different. 
Yeah, so there you go. Woodbizer sells a blade, well, they sell the blade sharpening and setting machines. A few companies sell those machines. Um, it kind of just depends on how many blades you go through, if it's really worth it for you. Uh, I think I had a few more here somewhere. <laughs> What's it like having all the room you need for storage? Uh, I have a lot of room, like outside space, but not a whole lot of storage space still, which is kind of funny to think about. Luckily, the warehouse helps with that. There's a lot, a lot of storage space there. I have to go back and look. last one here. Am I still building furniture and selling it? I haven't sold furniture in um, uh, five years, four years, something like that. Uh, everything I make now just kind of just goes into the house, which is kind of nice. I can make what we need for our house. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, last question. Uh, at what point did you know you wanted to mill logs? Did a family member or friend have a mill that got you excited? It was just like the progression of things for me because I wanted to get more involved in the material creation process to make the woodworking journey a little more interesting and exciting and then from like a cost savings perspective as well. You know when I started woodworking I was a lot younger I had more time than money like most people that age so my time like going to get logs and stacking the lumber to dry and doing all that stuff that was it's a fun little side thing for me so I kind of fell down that, uh, that general progression of I started out making stuff from solid wood that I bought from the home center, which was ungodly expensive. And then I decided I'd buy a jointer and planer. I bought a little cobble machine so that I could start buying rough saw lumber. So I went to a guy's place that was selling lumber out of his barn that he had cut uh, like a few years ago. And I used that. I saved a bunch of, saved a bunch of money doing it that way just by using rough saw lumber. But that got me thinking like, well, the guy, all he did was cut this lumber that was wet when he cut it. He stacked it and it dried because it was sitting there for a while. I, I can do that. I, could, I got time. So I started buying uh, green lumber and drying it myself. That's how I started like learning how to dry stuff myself in my basement. And then from there, I'm like, well, I, I get all this, this stuff from the Sawyer, which is great and all. But what if I want my logs cut a certain different way? Because like the way that I was starting to build things, it utilize material that wasn't like to grade for what typical stories were sawing. I want to be able to cut like the log how I wanted to cut it because I had a, a vision in my mind of what that piece of wood would become in an actual piece of furniture. So that last step was more about having control over the sawing process versus like I want to save more money because there wasn't really a whole lot of cost savings between drawing your own lumber and then like cutting it and then drawing it all yourself. And now I don't think I, it'd be weird to like not cut my own stuff. <laughs> All right, let me get, uh, oh, there's a bunch of them now. Okay, I'm gonna run through these real quick. Do I set and sharpen my own blades? No, I don't set or sharpen them at all. I throw them in the warehouse <laughs> when they're dull. Ideal length bar for a chainsaw mill. Uh, it just kind of depends on what you want to be cutting. Uh, the one I had was a 42 inch bar. So that would cut about 36 inches wide. And when you're doing your, your chainsaw milling, the most efficient way for the saw to be cutting is at a slight bias to the log. So instead of going straight into the end grain, if you can get a little bit of an angle on it, then you start pulling more fibers and bigger chunks out versus like coming across end grain, which is not as easy. So having a little bit more length than what you're trying to cut allows you to get that little skew angle on there and makes it a lot easier to saw. So if you're planning on cutting like 24 inch diameter logs, like as a maximum, like a 42 inch bar, when in the sawmill guide thing, gives you like 36 inches to cut with, which at an angle will cut uh, 24 pretty efficiently. 
Do I have a level area for long-term drawing or are you going to have to level some space? Yeah, I got to level <laughs> a lot of space. Unless I do a drawing area way in the back, that little alcove thing that I showed by that walnut tree, that area is flat. But even like where I'm going to put the sawmill, that's sloped. <laughs> it's, it's all hilly here. It is very nice to have some more space, like even in, in the shop, just having things spread out a little bit so I can actually like walk around has been uh, an incredible change. It's so much more productive too. All right, that is gonna do it for this one. I hope you all have a fantastic week. Hope you all have a fantastic weekend. And uh, I don't know, do something fun. Enjoy yourself and all that good stuff. So <laughs> I'll see you uh, next week. <laughs>